So I'm going to chat to you a little bit about pulling your trad climbing kit together. And um, that trad climbing kit that you carry on your harness when you're lead climbing, that's going to differ depending on whether you're climbing on, say, volcanic rocks, say here in the Lake District, where you might place a lot more wires, um, such things like this, more so than cams, um, or you will place some cams, um, as opposed to maybe if you're climbing on gritstone, where you'll be pl placing predominantly cams, you know, with a lot less wires. So you'll adjust that rack accordingly. Um, but essentially, you know, to go trad climbing, you will need, a, you know, a basic level of equipment to be able to lead safely on that sort of terrain. Um, and so if we just start off with wires, um, these are the wires that you place in the cracks as you're leading a pitch of rock. Now, you will need a, a good selection of wires to protect yourself as you go up that crack, because unless you've climbed that pitch before, you won't know the kind of protection that you, that's needed. So make sure you've got um, a range of wires um, for any pitch that you lead. And I would say the wires go from um, one through to 10 plus. Uh, make sure you've got like double the amount of those wires, because as soon as you've placed one, then you haven't got it to place again if you've only got one of each. So make sure that you've got at least two of each size, so that if you come across a similar size crack further on the pitch, you've got a wire to place. And then you've also got a selection of wires left over um, for that b layer or those anchors needed then to bring up that second to climb the pitch after you. So make sure you've got a good selection of wires um, to place. And I have to say, make sure that um, the wires, you know, are split up into bunches, um, maybe some smalls, some mediums, and then some large ones. Um, and make sure they they hang on, they hung on um, these sort of snapling carabiners that don't have um, any edge there for the wires to catch on, so you can take them on and off that snap link really, really easily. So they're not going to catch when you're taking them off or you're, you're, you're putting them back on again. So make sure the carabiner you use there works um, because everything you do needs to be pretty efficient when you're on the lead um, so you're not getting wires caught and stuff. So I've got a couple of old, um, older style carabiners, if you like, snap links that do have you know, that edge there. And you can see that if I just take a wire off, how that wire coming off that carabiner is going to catch then on that um, lip, if you like, that the gate snaps into. So have a really smooth area here so you can take on and off the wires really efficiently while you're climbing on the lead. But split them up into smaller groups, smaller bunches of small, mediums and larges. And I've got some extra large ones here for those bigger cracks. And it also means you're less likely to drop a wire while on the lead. If all the wires are on, say, two carabiners, then there's a massive bunch of wires, you're likely to drop a wire. So split them off and then also split the wires evenly on either side of your harness so that you can reach down with either hand and grab some wires to then place while you're on the lead. So just a little bit about uh, placing uh, wires and, and having wires on your harness and, and having a good selection of wires on your harness for any pitch of rock that you climb. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the wires and having a good selection of wires uh, and doubling up on many of the sizes um, so that whatever stage of the climb you're on, you've, you've possibly got a wire then to place on the lead. Um, and when you are placing the wires, the wires are designed for those sections of the cracks that um, you know are more sort of funnel shaped. Um, so that the, the wire is pulled down into that sort of funnel shape there and sort of slots in really well and, uh, and and won't move if you would sort of put your weight onto it in a, in a sort of leader fall or sit back onto it. So you place your wires for that sort of funnel shaped crack. Now for those cracks that are more parallel and, and typically on gritstone there's a lot of parallel cracks as there are on granite and in the lakes here on, on the volcanic rock as well. They're, they'll take more what you call a cam or when I first started climbing they were called friends but they're called cams now. Wild Country make the cams, DMM make the dragon cam, Black Diamond you know make their own cams and, and it's worth just having a, a selection of cams um, through from sort of finger width um, cracks 
through to sort of more fist jamming cracks. And they're those parallel cracks um, that you're looking to, to place the sort of cam into. So it's really worth again having a selection of cams for those sort of parallel cracks that you might come across when you're on the lead climbing a pitch of rock. So you've got a selection of wires, double up on most sizes, and then you've got a selection of cams as well. And again, like I said, gear your rack up for the rock type you're climbing on. So if you're on gritstone, you can have a, a big selection of cams, you know, doubling up on most sizes and a lighter weight selection of wires. And then maybe on the volcanic rock here in the lakes, you might have more of a, a bigger, bulkier rack of, of wires and, and more of a selection of cams. But essentially you sort of, you know, you're setting yourself up that you've got something to place in those funnel shaped cracks, such as a wire or a, a cam to place in one of those parallel side cracks, such as a cam. So if you've uh, placed a wire on the lead and you've placed it in one of those funnel shaped cracks, um, you pull down on that wire, it sits in that funnel shaped crack really securely, it's bedded in, it doesn't move. Then what you need to do now is attach your rope to that to give you that security you need while you're on the lead. And what you do is you clip a quick draw to that wire. And so I've got a selection of quick draws here. Now what we want to do is be really soft on that wire that we've placed because what we don't want to do is have a quick draw on here and as we climb past it the weight of the rope you know drags the quick draw upwards and actually lifts the wire out of the placement you placed it in lifts it out and then it slides down the rope and it's no good you know and it's not going to protect you while you're on the lead so you place the wire initially in the right size crack you pull down on it so it beds in well and it's not moving and then you need to quick clip a quick draw to that wire to then clip the rope into it now i would say if you trad climbing it's really worthwhile having a selection of quick draws of different sizes and so i've got half of my rack when i'm trad climbing will be these quick draws that I can also extend because I'm really keen that I'm soft on the gear that I place. So for instance, if I clip a quick draw into there, onto that wire, any movement, you know, um, of the rope moving through this snaplink carabiner, there's hardly any movement on the wire that I've placed. But I can actually, you know, create even less movement on the wire that I place by extending that quick draw and you can see here, there's hardly any movement on this snap link and then totally none on, on the wire that I've placed. So I'm really soft on the gear that I've placed, making sure that it doesn't come out while I climb past it. So it's really worthwhile having a, a selection of these extendable quick draws, whether it be to be soft on the wire that you place or whether it be that this wire is tucked under a small overhang or an overlap or you've got a slight change of direction in when you lead in, make sure you extend with these ex extendable quick draws so that you're really soft on the gear that you place, you don't lift it out. You know, it might be that I use a shorter quick draw, you know, one of these sort of stiffer ones, but you can see here that any movement in the quick draw actually has got this kind of lifting movement on the, the wire that you've placed. So be really aware of the quick draws you buy for trad climbing that might be quite different to the quick draws you, you, you buy maybe for sport climbing where you're clipping into a bolt, a fixed point, that it doesn't matter whether there's an upward pull, a sideways pull or a downward pull. It's really key that on these wires that you place that there's a, a downward pull and there isn't an upward pull. So using these quick draws, again, these extendable ones, okay, that's okay, but I'd like to extend it a bit more so I'm even softer on that key piece of gear that I'm placing you know, I can just extend it to make sure that there's absolutely no movement in that wire at all so that, you know, the rope can run through this one really really smoothly. And if I do fall off, I know that it's going to be a downward pull on that wire that I've placed. Um, so you'll probably buy these um, extendable ones separately. You'll buy the sh short tape and then the snap link separately. I don't know if you can buy them in a bundle. But again, you can just pass the carabiner through the other one, clip it off and just make it into a smaller draw as it hangs from your harness like that. So have a selection of quick draws that you place to, that you clip onto your wires or you clip to your cams, just to make sure you're soft on the gear that you place so it doesn't lift out while you're climbing past it. And lastly, we talked a little bit about the wires, having a good selection of wires of different sizes 
selection of cams depending on the sort of rock type you're climbing on. You've got a selection of quick draws. They're extendable ones, so you're soft on the gear, or just sort of medium length ones. But again, you're trying to be soft on that gear that you place. You don't lift it out while you are climbing past it on the lead. And then also when you get to the top of the climb, you know, you need to set up a B layer and anchor. And hopefully you'll have some cams left and some wires left to be able to do that safely. But joining together, um, those cams or the wires as an anchor or to make a belay um, you need you know one or two um, longer slings the carry on screw gate carabiners like I've got here um, I tend to, to carry two when I'm leading any pitch of rock so that's great then for it could be for an anchor halfway up the climb I need to maybe thread you know, around the back of a tree or, or through a thread in the rock or something. But I've got two slings then that potentially I could use for a bee or an anchor with screw gate carabiners to tie them off. And I've also got a spare couple of other screw gate carabiners on my harness. One for me to secure myself at the top of the pitch um, and then another one to help again link those anchors together with the long slings to bring it down to that central point that I'm then going to use to bring up my second and then I've got my belay plate again on a screw gate carabiner so really this sort of lives on my harness belay plate screw gate carabiner a couple of screw gate carabiners I tend to go for those bigger HMS style ones to accommodate your clove hitch knots or, or maybe a couple of different knots while I'm tying into a belay and then a couple of slings also longer slings with screw gate carabiners so that's really great then for me to sort of rig that anchor, that belay at the top of a pitch to then bring up the second.